So hello everybody, welcome to a new interview of my YouTube channel. I am Nicolas Aguilera and here I am with a very famous and charismatic um, person, Dr. Neil Barnard, the president of the PCRM. Uh, he's also a psychiatrist, okay. uh, a nutrition expert with a lot of books about nutrition and health. Uh, you have appeared in a lot of documentaries like Forks Over Nice, Eating Your Life, What the Health, and you have conducted a lot of um, studies in the plant-based uh, nutrition. So thank you, Dr. Neil. Thank you. For giving me this opportunity because I know you have a very uh, busy schedule. So Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. So all right. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. So let us start with the first question. Uh, at first, how did you get in the nutrition science as a psychiatrist? Yes, I was running a, a psychiatric hospital, or psychiatric hospital ward in New York. And while I was there, I saw many patients who had medical illnesses that were complicated by psychiatric problems. Um, people with severe heart disease who might have been delusional, for example. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize we weren't doing anything to prevent these illnesses. Um, we didn't do anything to stop a heart attack until it came into the emergency room door. And so I thought, well, we need to do something about that. We need to change that. And nutrition is front and center. It's the most important thing. So I decided to start this organization to advocate for some changes. All right. How long, how old are you in that time? Um, let's see. That was 1985. So I was about, um, I was just out of residency. So I was about 31. And how long had you been uh, like a doctor in that time? Um, well, I finished medical school in 1980, and then I did a residency that ended in 1984, and this was um, right the first year after that. Ah, all right, perfect, perfect. And when, and after that, when did you decide to create an organization like PCRM? And if you started this alone or with some other persons? Yeah, I have people? to tell you, I, I decided it right at the time that we needed an organization, but I, I made kind of a mistake. I called it the Physicians Committee the whole idea was there'd be maybe 10 people, oh. um, a small group of, of doctors who would yeah, weigh in as experts. But we've grown a lot. So yeah. it's, it's hard to think of this as a committee because it's much bigger than that. But I think that the, the, the name is perfect. The name is very, um, you are attached to the, with the name. I think most of the, now around the world, it's very, it's very known. It's very known in the, in the world. Well, it's what it's going to be. So yeah. we're not going to change it now, I don't think. <laughs> All right, so now take, talk about, about a little bit of your new book. Yes. What um, did it bring you to the hormones and health? Yeah, it was um, kind of a, um, an accident. I was sitting here at my desk and the phone rang and it was a young woman who had terrible, terrible menstrual pain. Many women have some menstrual pain, but for mm -hmm. maybe one in 10, it's off the scale. And she wanted painkillers. And I said, I can give you that. But I wanted to think about what would stop this from happening again next month. And so I suggested to her something I don't think any doctor ever suggested to a menstrual pain patient before, which was to eliminate animal products from her diet and to eat no added oils. So very low fat plant-based mm. diet. And it cured her. Um, her. Her menstrual cramps just didn't come back. And so I followed that up with uh, a, a large research study with Georgetown University, and we found that it works for a lot of women. And so what I suddenly realized is that diet changes can change hormones, in this case, estrogens, and that in turn affect our health. Now, but most people think, well, I don't even know what a hormone is. I don't understand why it's doing that. And why the heck would a vegan diet be good for menstrual cramps? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But as we have learned, foods can control hormones. Yeah. And in turn, the hormones control our health. And once you know a few simple rules, you can really revolutionize your health. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was reading a little bit mm -hmm. some of the chapters. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, I think hormones are related with all of uh, our our uh, overall health. Yes. And also with our mood, because mm -hmm. I, I know you have a, a chapter about our mood, how food and can affect our mood. This was something that was also an accident. In fact, everything in the book was probably <laughs> originally something we just stumbled on. Um, there is a car insurance company called Geico. 
and it's a big company, and their national headquarters is just right over there, about hey. three, four blocks away. And so several years ago, we were testing out plant-based diets at Geico. And the idea was to see if it would help people to lose weight or to improve their diabetes. And it did. It helped them a lot. But we also discovered in the course of that study that many people started to have improvements in their mood. Their depression diminished, their anxiety diminished, and even job absenteeism diminished, meaning they weren't taking sick days. They were, they were at work and feeling good. And so we started to realize, well, wait a minute, something about this diet is helping how people feel emotionally. And so um, other researchers have looked at this as well and found the same thing, that plant-based diets help mood. So why would that be? Um, what, we think is what we think is going on is that the digestive tract, your, your gut, influences the brain. Um, you have bacteria in your gut, the microbiome, and if they're healthy bacteria, that in turn can, um, they produce compounds, short chain fatty acids and other things that will affect brain function in a positive way. And when people switch from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, the gut bacteria change very rapidly within a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so we think, right. that's, we think that's the issue. All right. So it's something like the gut bacteria started to release some a compound that affect our brain in a positive way. That's what we think. And there's a second thing, too, which is that depression has an inflammatory component. By that, I mean, if you're stung by a bee um, or you hit your thumb with a hammer, um, you see inflammation. And what that means is that white blood cells in your body um, start gathering to um, clean up debris and they release chemicals that will attack vi uh, viruses or bacteria. And this process of inflammation of chemicals being released by white blood cells can happen all over your body. That inflammation can affect your brain. And when people are on a plant-based diet, there's less inflammation in their body. And that mm -hmm. helps the brain too. So we think that when people are eating vegetables and fruits and whole grains and beans, there's less inflammation in the body and the brain cools off a little bit. Ah, all right, perfect. Yeah. I understand, I understand. Perfect, so now talk a, let's talk about a little bit some nutrition topic that for sure are related with our hormones and our general health. Sure. For example, um, I know there is a lot of doubt. Some people have a, a, still some doubt about omega-3. Right. Especially vegans. Do you think that vegans need to consume uh, omega-3 supplements? Um, that's something that's controversial and hasn't really been decided. Mm -hmm. But the, the short answer would probably be no. Um, because according to health authorities, there are there is an essential fatty acid called alpha-linolenic acid, which is an 18-carbon chain uh, omega-3 and your body can use it to produce other omega-3s. Mm -hmm. um, the conversion from the short chain to the longer chain is pretty sh s modest, but that could be because people are eating too many competing other fats, unhealthy fats that get in the way. So what we think is probably true is that if people are eating um, vegetables and fruits, uh, there's not a lot of fat in, say, broccoli or kale or collards or other greens, but what there is is proportionally quite high in omega-3. Right. So if people eat a lot of those, or they, if they want, they can have things like chia seeds and hemp seeds and flax seeds. They don't have to, but, but those are also high in... Yeah, so we don't have to worry about eating them all every day. No, 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 or, right. or not at all, necessarily. Um, right. but, but green vegetables I would have every day. Perfect. I think nice. they're, they're very, very healthy for you, right. and they, they provide the omega-3s that you need. All right. And about, but what about uh, soy consumption? Some people are worried about their hormones and if uh, when they eat a lot of soy. Do you, do you think we need to be worried about our soy consumption? Uh, um, if you go online, you see a lot of people writing about soy, and they're worried about it. <laughs> um, they will say that, that soy has what are called isoflavones, which is true, they have them. And sometimes they use the word phytoestrogen, meaning phyto, P-H-Y-T-O, plant-derived estrogens. And so people have been concerned that, well, if you're eating these, these compounds, that a man could become effeminate um, or that a woman would develop breast cancer. But it turns out that these aren't actually true. Um, some men do have breast development, 
um, but it's not from eating soy. Eating spot, yeah. um, if you go to the beach in the summertime and you see a man who's gained some weight and he has he does have some breast development, you can ask him, do you eat tofu? You know, <laughs> do you eat edamame? Yeah. And he's going to say, what are you talking about? I don't eat any of that stuff. Um, I don't so, even know them. <laughs> so he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't even know the word. So he might have breast development, but it's not from those things. He has breast development because he's gained weight from eating hamburgers and pizza. And when you gain more body fat, your body, your fat turns testosterone into estrogen. It converts male hormones into female hormones. And that's the reason he's got breast development. All right. And for Perfect. women with women regarding breast cancer, soy products reduce cancer risk um, about 30%. So the women who consume the most soy have about 30% less risk of breast cancer compared to other women. All right, perfect. So uh, bottom line about soy, we don't have to be worried about it. It's, no, it's, it's, you, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's optional. You don't have to have it. But two things, it's always better than what it replaces. So if you eat pork sausage and you throw it out and have soy sausage in its place, yeah. that's a good move. But secondly, it has some cancer prevention properties, both for women and with regard to breast cancer, and for men with regard to prostate cancer. In both cases, it cuts cancer rates about by about 30%. All right, thank mm -hmm. you. What about environmental chemicals in the food? Especially, well, sometimes some people will say, say that plants also have uh, environmental chemicals. So that is another reason to don't eat like a vegan diet. Do you think we have to be worried about environmental chemicals? Um, I think it's good to be cognizant of environmental chemicals, but it's not a reason to eat meat instead of plants because what's the cow been yeah. eating? Um, cows and chickens and pigs are eating often pesticide-treated plants. Um, and it's better to eat the plants directly. Um, when a cow eats a, a huge amount of corn or soybeans or whatever, if pesticides were treated, We're used to treat all those individual plants. It takes a lot of plants to go into that animal's body and the chemicals will concentrate. If you're eating plants directly, even if they're not organic, you'll get far fewer chemicals than you would right. get yeah. by consuming animal products. Yeah, so it's not that worry again. No, but, no but even so, it's good to be cognizant. And I would, in, I would encourage people, if you can get um, locally grown products, if you can get organic products, all right, that's perfect. a good idea. Okay. Um, but vegetables and fruits are always cleaner. For example, some uh, women that are uh, breastfeeding, mm -hmm. uh, they are more. They have to be more worried, worried about um, organic or conventional. Um, I think it's always good to get organic if you can. Right. However, what they should be most concerned about is whether they're following a healthy vegan diet or not. Right. Researchers have tested breast milk. And in women who follow meat-based diets, their breast milk is much higher in chemical exposure uh, compared to, to women following vegan diets. All right, perfect, nice. And well, another question about fasting. Do you think uh, fasting can affect our hormones, especially, for example, water long-term? In fact, the next week I will be in the um, in Trunor Health Center. Oh. Yes. So I am also interested in, the, in this topic. Are you so, going to fast or are you going to observe? No, I am going to serve three days rotation observation. Uh, uh, three days observation uh, oh. period. That's a great thing. You know, fasting is a controversial thing, but I, I have been convinced that when people fast, they very often get health benefits, particularly for autoimmune conditions, but other things too. Um, the only thing, the only uh, caveat that I have is that if a person is fasting for more than just a day or two, um, and if it's just a water fast where you're not really getting other foods, you have to do it with supervision, supervision because it can be dangerous. And, and where you're going, True North is probably the best place in the country yeah. um, where people go in, there's very good medical supervision, you'll be checked on every day, um, and many people do really, really well. With it, so. Yes, I think it's important because I have seen in internet mainly mm -hmm. a lot of people doing water long fasting uh, by their own, and it could be dangerous. It, it can be dangerous um, if you do it all by yourself, um, but if you, if you do it under under close supervision, I think it's a fine thing. Perfect. Fine thing to do. All right, right. Uh, by the way, I have one other comment. There are some people who do uh, fasting where they'll uh, fast two days every week or something like that, and that's okay. 
But um, I would encourage people not to use that as a reason to overeat on the other days. That's important, so, yes. That's, I think that it's more related with our uh, mental It can be. Mental health. It can be. Yeah. What about now? Um, some people believe that plant based diet is not for everyone because we need a, 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 a little of meat or mm -hmm. uh, animal products. Well, it's not for cats or, do or maybe, you know, it's not for cats or lions or tigers because they're carnivores. But we are in the biological class of great apes and it's a perfect diet for us. All right, so perfect. We so a healthy diet means vegetables and fruits and whole grains and legumes. So that's the bean group. The and power plate. The power yeah, plate. I'm going to show this in there. <laughs> I hope so. And you should also take vitamin B12. You need that for yeah. healthy nerves and healthy blood. And that's a healthy diet. Yes. All right. Perfect. Uh, well, we are almost finished. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about a very complicated question, but there's something that I that I thought was: Have you ever find a, a found a difficult arguments against plant-based diet during all of your time being there? No, I, I think, no. I think a, a vegan diet is good for everybody, but I have to say it's not the end of, of our exploration; it's the beginning. What I mean is, once a person gets the animal products off their plate, then you can answer other questions, or, or at least try to. Like, is it your question? Should it be organic? Um, or should my diet be more grains? Um, or should it be more fruit? Those are good questions. Um, how low should my oil intake be? Um, uh, should it be more of an Asian pattern? Should it be more a Latin American pattern? There are many other good questions that can be, can be answered. Um, But if a person is still eating cheese and meat and so forth, they haven't really gotten to the point of being able to do a truly healthy diet, in my opinion. Mm, nice, interesting, interesting answer. I, I did, I couldn't imagine that that answer. All right. So, and the last question, uh, a message for our public here: What do you recommend to doctors and medical students, or even health pro, uh, professionals that are uh, interesting, or even they? They can't believe that a plant-based diet it could be uh, the be the best option for our right. health and for our patients. Yes, first of, I would say two things. All right. The first thing is that the the scientific literature on plant-based diets is enormous. By that I mean, when we were funded by the National Institutes of Health to test plant-based diets for type 2 diabetes, that was revolutionary. But that was almost 20 years ago. Um, and since that time, many other research teams are, are using the same thing. And I don't know how many thousands of patients have, have been using this approach with great results. Um, and that's true not only for diabetes, but cholesterol control and weight control, blood pressure control and other things. Meaning that we have studies that are published. They have been summarized in meta-analyses. So we have confidence in our data. The other thing I would say is that doctors need to try this diet for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because in the same way that a doctor is not a very good advocate against smoking, if they have a pack of cigarettes in their pocket, um, they're not a very yes, good advocate for true. health if they have never tried the healthiest diet. So try it. Um, it'll change, Give it a chance. Give it a chance. It'll change your life and it'll change your patient's lives too and you'll be a better doctor for it. All right. Nice. I love this question, Dr. Neil Barnard. I am so happy to sure. be in front of you. Sure. I have followed you a long time ago, so I really appreciate this opportunity. Well, thank you. Your questions are terrific, and I'm <laughs> delighted to be able to have this chance to, to share this conversation with you. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, all of you. I hope you, uh, you like this interview and share with all of your friends, family, and everybody. So see you next time. Bye-bye.